Hey gang, it's me, Garrett, masked man of mystery and your best friend. Today, we're talking about masking. Everybody is doing it these days, especially the cool kids. If you're a friend of the deathcore of Krieg, like I am, then you know that the best part about masking is taking the masking off. That's right, we're talking about masking off our vehicles so we can make some tank markings on this episode of The Miniature Men. Now I was making some squad markings for my vehicles. That's gonna be today's topic. But before I show you my project, let me introduce you to some tools that you might use on your next masking project. Subject number one is poster tack. Now you take this and knead it up so it's nice and pliable. You gotta really work it in here. Once it's thin enough, you can cover the face or head or helmet of one of your miniatures. This allows you to spray one color on the body and keep the head another color, like this Sisters of Silence you can see here. You might also do it for a red helmet on an ultramarine or a yellow helmet on a red blood angel. It's all up to you. Whatever you want to do to keep the head separate from the rest of the body. You can also use this in big long pieces and apply it to your tanks to make the tiger stripe that Games Workshop does for its official Katachan and Kadian models. You can also use pre-cut stencils to make patterns on your vehicles like I did for my more historical tiger stripe on my Imperial Guard vehicles. If you can't find the pattern you like on the internet or anywhere else, you can make your own with frisket film. You just cut out the pattern you like and lay the stencils on your vehicles. Those are all great products, but we're not using those today. Today, we're doing normal masking with normal masking tape. Let's see how I did it. All masking requires adhesion. Adhesion means it's sticky. It'll stay on the model. Not adhesive enough and it won't stick on the model. You can hold things up to the model and just spray around that, but that's not today's technique. Today, we're working on masking. Too adhesive and it'll rip paint off the model. Taking off paint for your model would be very painful for you. So if too adhesive is not good, how do we fix it? The answer is dust. You can use dust that collects normally on your table, your cutting board, or if you want to get it from the source, you can get it right off the floor. Getting more dust reduces how adhesive the tape is. You can test the adhesion of your masking tape by putting it on any piece of paper. Then when you peel it off, if it rips off any paper, you've got a problem. So make sure you're adding enough dust so that's not happening. You generally want as little stickiness on the masking tape as possible. Just enough to keep your masking on your model. Anything more, you're running that risk of peeling off paint. At this point, our masking tape is ready to go on the model. Just make sure that you use paper and tape to cover every part of the model if you're using an airbrush. You're gonna see my mistake later on. Now the question is, is where do you put the masking tape? Me personally, I was looking to try this out for the first time, so I put it in the most obvious spot. That's the panel gap on the sides of the tank. Dip it in there so that way paint won't cross the panel. If you need help, try a tool to fit in there. I like using a silicon shaping tool because it's a lot like a finger. It'll push out those air bubbles in the tape. Air bubbles are bad. They form pockets that raise off of the surface of the vehicle or panel. If you don't push out all the air bubbles and they're still in the tape, there's a chance that the paint will slip in to the part that you wanted masked off. So make sure you smush out all the air bubbles so no paint can get through. At some points in my project, I let the sticky side face out because it doesn't matter if paint gets on that. Just make sure that you're pushing out all the air bubbles and masking off any areas where paint might get. Once it's all masked off, you can start painting. If you're using a brush, just make sure that you're painting away from the tape. If you paint towards the tape, you might push paint into and underneath the masking and that'll get paint where you don't want it. If you're using an airbrush, make sure that you cover every part of the vehicle that might get paint on it. You can use paper to reduce how much tape you're using, but you gotta make sure you cover everything or you're gonna have really sad feelings like I did when I removed my masking for the first time. 
If that happens to you, it's not impossible to fix. I came back and I added more of Bang combined with black from Vallejo model colors and I worked up a one to three ratio to help me get it back to its base color. Then I had to come back and build it back up with my lighter blue colors. I didn't like doing it twice and you're not gonna like it either. So make sure you do the work and mask everything off. Once you're done masking and you peel it off, you're gonna really enjoy the feeling of seeing that crisp straight line on your vehicles. It does feel really good, I have to say. That's everything you need to know about masking off your vehicles to make tank markings. If you wanna see more hobby tips, follow us on Instagram. We post there every day with small tips that can't make it into a whole video. Subscribe here to see full length tutorials posted every Friday. That's it for now guys, stay masked up and I'll see you next time. Nobody cared who I was until I put on the mask and then I took it off.